Hi everybody, I'm back. That's right, it's Riddle Girl and I'm back with some origami fun for you. Now our project today is the Chinese star. Our finished product will look like this one right here. Now you can use any type of paper that you like. Okay, today I will be using a piece of 12 by 9 inch tracing paper. However, you can use origami paper that comes pre-cut into the little squares or you can use standard wrapping paper. Not the crinkly foily stuff, but standard wrapping paper is also the same consistency as origami paper. Now, the first thing that you'll need to do is take your piece of paper and you need to cut it into a square. Now, I don't really like having to try to measure with a ruler and determine what's going to be a perfect square. So I'm just going to take my piece of paper, fold it over, corner to corner, trying to keep it as perfect as possible. And when I've done that, then I'm going to cut right along this edge right here as best I can with a pair of scissors. So once you've made your cut, you need to go ahead and fold this paper in half, keeping it as square as possible. And then following the guideline that you just made, cut it right down the middle. After cutting the paper along your guideline, this is what it looks like. You only need to work with one piece at a time from this point, so we'll just move this one piece off. Your first step now is going to be to take this paper and fold it lengthwise in half. You want to keep your edges as close to each other as possible, trying to keep it as even as possible when you do that. Take your finger and run it along your crease several times to make sure that you have a nice solid crease there. Right. Then we're going to fold it in half again. Now sometimes what happens, especially when you're using thicker paper than tracing paper, is you'll get these little crinkles right here. The best way to do that is to either take your finger, or if it's smaller than that, a pencil, and place right in there, and it'll get rid of that little crinkle so that you can flatten it down. We're also going to complete these same two steps with the other piece. So once again, we'll fold it in half, keeping it lined up as best we can. Now, if you happen to fold it and crease it and realize that you have a big overlap going on, you can go ahead and fix it and recrease it. However, I do caution you against redoing it too many times because it will weaken your paper and make your project unusable. And once again, there's my little crinkle that I'm having an issue with. So I'm going to place my finger inside there to get rid of it. So now we have two pieces that look exactly alike. And once again, I'm going to remove one off camera so that we can work with the other piece. Now, you want to keep it folded right here, but you can unfold your second fold. We need to use this crease as a guideline. These guidelines are very helpful in origami. And you'll also want to make sure that you're always paying attention to which guideline that you're using. When you make a fold, you never want the piece that you're folding by it to go over the line. You want to put it next to the line. So our next step is going to be to take our folded edge, the, the side that's closed, not open. This is an open side. This is a closed side. Take your closed side and fold it toward your crease. Now make sure that it doesn't overlap the crease, it just needs to go beside the crease. And then crease it down with your thumb, your finger, a pencil, whatever works for you. Now the opposite side needs to go the opposite direction, so we're going to take our open side and fold that one down right along our crease. So now we have something that looks like that. Now, here's where the important part comes in. Our second piece 
needs to be the exact opposite of our first piece. Now in our first piece we had taken our closed side and folded it up. So in our second piece we need to make sure that that is going to be the opposite. So we're going to take our open side and we're going to fold it down along our crease. And our closed side will be folded up along the crease. So now we have two opposites. Our next step is going to be folding this into a diamond shape. We now have this piece looking like this with our open edges up here. We now need to turn the whole thing over and you still have a guideline here, a crease. We're still going to be utilizing this. All right, but not yet. We're also going to be using this as a guideline. Our next step is to turn this corner into a triangle. Now I call it a triangle because it looks like a triangle. Corner, corner, corner. See triangle? Okay. We're also going to be doing that with this side. Now it may help you to turn it around and have it face you when you do that. That's fine. Whatever way works for you. It should be looking like a haphazard S right about now. We're also going to bring our other piece in and we're going to do the same thing. There's our open sides, so we're going to turn it over. I'm going to make a triangle. And now this is where a lot of people get confused. You think you just folded this one up, so this one must need to go up too. No, it needs to look like a triangle. So in order to keep from confusing yourself, you may need to turn it so that it looks like an isosceles triangle. So now we have a triangle here and we have a triangle here. Now our next step, we're going to take our little flappy area and following this guideline, fold it down right along the guideline. And this little flappy area, we're going to take that and fold it up right along the guideline. When it's done, it will look like a diamond. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Take the flap, fold it along the guideline, and your other flap, fold it along the guideline. When they're both complete, you'll see that your guidelines are pointing in opposite directions. That's perfect. Now, we're going to move on to our final step. When you're looking at these, you'll see that you have one side with little pockets and you'll see that you have one side with flaps. And that's the same for both of these. Now what you'll want to do is take the side with the flaps and place them on each other like so, so that you have your pockets on the outside. Right. You'll lay that down and you'll take your flappy edge here and place it underneath and your next flappy edge on the opposite corner and place it underneath. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. Then you'll take the whole thing and turn it over. Place your little flappy corner inside the pocket. And your final one will also do the same thing. However, this one can become more difficult when you're using a smaller piece of paper because this little pocket can be hard to get into and you can actually end up bending your paper if you're not very careful. So very carefully insert it, don't force it. And once it's all the way in there, you have completed a four-pointed Chinese star. And next time, I'll show you how to make the 12-pointed star or the sun however you'd like to call it. It's still gorgeous and makes a perfect accent piece for making decorations for your Christmas tree or for hanging on the wall for all seasons. See you next time!